sleep and I was having some Twitter conversations about how sort of a congregation of spirits that are attached to a site have the potential to form a genius Loki. Um, if you've never heard of a genius Loki, basically what it is is a protective spirit of a place. <laughs> it's a self-aware spirit and it just sort of guards over everything. Uh, so what I'm going to do here today is basically show you what my theory is, why, how I think this thing can occur. And what it's going to start with is your basic stuff. So we're going to say first off we have a site in this situation, just very basic. We have a home or let's make it cooler we have a asylum you know one that we all frequent that we like to go to like uh trans allegheny well typically inside of these sites are in situations like this we have spirits that like to hang out at the site that are either attached to the site or had something tragic happen to them that keeps them at the site. Typically, when we're talking about this situation and we're speaking about spirits, there's a few different kinds. You have spirits who have passed over. Then you have spirits who are attached to a site. <laughs> when we speak about spirits that have passed over, it's pretty straightforward. They're spirits that have were attached to a human body. The body died, and they chose to go on to another life. Rather that, in my belief system, be rest or reincarnation. When we talk about spirits who are attached, we have to first separate those two into two things. You have spirits who are aware of the attachment, and then you have spirits who are unaware of the attachment and that they're still living. Um, what we're going to focus on here is more of the aware spirits your unaware spirits it's hard to really classify them you know i'm doing this all on the fly but basically when we talk about unaware happenings and things that are attached not so much attached when i more say unaware i'm speaking more about residual hauntings when i come over here and i talk about things that are aware we're talking about actual spirits or ghosts who are at a site and they know they're there they can interact with you. They know everything that you're doing. They don't like you being there. And typically, they still have the same human emotion that they had that when they were living. Um, some of the things that can cause something to become attached is one, unfinished business. If I misspell something, I'm sorry. It almost looks like Disney. Um, you know, you have a choice to not pass. You have tragic events. And you can even say some, somewhat that they're confused. <laughs> These two sort of deal with each other. 
Sometimes when something happens suddenly and you get a, de a tragic event, <clears throat> the spirit may see a light and they have the choice to pass over, but typically they might be confused or they just choose not to. This is why you go to places like Gettysburg and you see a lot of spirit activity there, rather it be residual or intelligent is because a lot of tragic events happen there. But to get back to what we were really focusing on here, when we're talking about the house and the, the genius Loki, we're really focusing here on one primary group of spirits. And for me, these are going to be your aware and intelligent hauntings. These are the kind of spirits I'll focus on. Uh, I'll, again, this is on the fly. I'll try and explain it a little bit better because they can have the same manifestation of a genius Loki from residual. But here we're going to focus on aware and intelligent hauntings. Um, let's see here. So with these kinds of hauntings in terms of a genius Loki, the energy that they're dealing with, the energy of this group of people here is attached to a site. And what happens here when we have this attachment and these people are here because there's unfinished business, there might be curses attached to the land. There's group attachment because it would maybe be in a group tragic event or they were united in some spiritual way or they chose not to pass, or they're just confused, is you have this group of people, and we'll say, over time, a site becomes saturated with their energy. And when we talk about this saturation of energy, we're talking about a residual... just a residual accumulation of energy. The energy itself goes into the site and the site acts as a conductor almost. And it just stores all of this energy. This is a battery. It just stores all of this energy. <laughs> and over time, the site itself just becomes supercharged. And what we're dealing with when we talk about this energy and how things play amongst each other is these spirits that we have here. These spirits that we have here. Sorry, I'm messing with the program as I'm talking to you guys. The spirits that we have here start to develop an echelon system. So these are steps. Down here, you have a bunch of spirits who just are there. When you start to get further up the steps, you have one or two spirits that reside. Then when you get here, you may have one spirit that rules over everything. Now in this situation, this is completely separate. This is a lower level echelon system of spirit. It's like the ecology of spirit. That's what we're talking about here. This is a lower echelon level of system. Now you gotta remember this entire system is operating within this structure. And so what we have here is this gradual accumulation of energy that goes on within the system so it peaks over time and then the battery gets full fuller and fuller and a big this is here when we reach this point is where we start to differentiate between an intelligent haunting versus a residual haunting 
this is when we start to really see how things occur. What I'm focusing on here is your intelligent hunting. Because this system down here is a system of attached spirits or spirits that reside underneath the roof of this place that are all of an intelligent mindset, okay? I'm gonna try and keep some of these screens up because they'll relate. So when you get this group of intelligent spirits, you start to have an accumulation of a different kind of residual energy. Excuse me. It's almost as if, <laughs> I have to explain this in another video, but these spirits here, they have very human emotions. They get upset, they get angry. They're, they're happy about some things. They're still dealing with a lot of things that they dealt with when they were alive. This is the same kind of energy that we put out as people who are alive and living. But but the body's separated. You don't it, they don't necessarily have the energy conduction that we do that we have in our bodies, but still the emotional energy and energy that is there while separated from a body is still palpable. If that's the correct way to say that. It's it's still something that we can feel. <laughs> This energy builds up just the same way residual energy builds up in a home when people live in it. So keep that in mind. We're talking about residual energy that is intelligent from spirit that is attached. <laughs> All kinds of energy. You're talking about anger. happiness, um, you know, depression, <laughs> you know, the, the list goes on. But what I want you guys <laughs> to start seeing is we're going to make a connection and this is where the genius Loki is going to form, okay? We're going to start talking about the building itself, okay? So here... This building is the battery. This is your battery. Okay. Each of these individuals here, their bodies or their energy themselves serve as batteries. <laughs> but once they fill up, this starts to transfer over here to the actual conductor itself or the building itself. Now these batteries don't necessarily have to fill up. There's residual charge there that can also go over to the battery or the actual building itself. Now the building itself is going to already have its own natural battery which comes from say the ground, the history of the site, etc, etc. Now it already has its own battery. This feeds over. So let's review energy from the people spills over and it resonates into the conductor which is the building. The building itself starts to accumulate that energy. Very small bits of energy and the building itself collect, collects energy from them and adds to its own <laughs> supply. Now over time if we're looking at a graph you can almost say the building already has its own energy. This will be time. This will be energy. <laughs> the building already has its own energy. People come along and they start to add to it. And they add to it. And they add to it. And the building continues to add. And you start to reach this point of sort of, you know, max max saturation almost so again excuse me I don't know how the hell my mouse keeps going over there you sort of reach this point time over energy where you start to say you know down in this area you just have residual this will come back to these people remember these individuals here are intelligent 
spirits that are just unfortunately attached. <laughs> so when you talk about this energy here, this is your residual spectrum of the building. Then you come over here and you start to say, you know, everything goes up a level. You go into intelligence. And this is when I start to talk about. So, you know, we're building, we're building, we're building, we're building. Boom. And when you talk about these time frames, you know, you're talking about hundreds, thousands, you know, tens of thousands of years. But eventually it reaches this point where the building starts to develop some form of intelligence. And now when we talk about my theory here is when we talk about this intelligence, <laughs> there's two kinds of intelligence it, it could be an intelligence based off of you know these guys which are intelligent spirits and then you have another bit of intelligence which is strictly based off residual energy okay and in between when this in between when the just unintelligent and just natural residual energy when a natural residual energy has its own pulse you know <laughs> but eventually at some point when these two things begin to just really strongly start to saturate with one another you're going to get a building that starts to supercharge with a different form of energy <laughs> and what this different form of energy is is self awareness because here these are self-aware spirits and they're bringing this spark of life over here to this other form of energy and then what happens in my opinion in my theory is that eventually the building becomes intelligent Let's see, can I find the right screen? That's my graph. That's intelligence. So what we have there, if we come back to here, is now the people are attached to the site. They have their intelligent, they're saturating the site with intelligent energy. The residual portion of the site no longer is residual. And what you have is this building and the energy of the people meet. And in between the energy of the people and the energy of the building They begin and the building recognizes them inside of its ecosystem and then you get a genius Loki <laughs> now basically what we're dealing with at this point <laughs> inside of with the genius Loki is that it identifies with the individuals inside it here. The individuals and their conscious thoughts, feelings, whatever, begin to focus out here. Did I spell that right? No, I butchered that. But. The genius Loki then says, you know, these are my people. They become self-aware and becomes protective. 
and it and the site itself is no longer just a normal residual site that's they're conducting <laughs> it becomes intelligent it becomes you know a being all itself so it's sort of like you know this is the system here <laughs> it almost looks like people worshiping a god right but in this situation the people are one with the site and then the site becomes one with them and then you have the formation of a genius loki <laughs> now this thing has a function and that's to protect shield these are its people so it's going to be a protecting force <laughs> so typically you know you have a lot of people that say you have to offer something to the land or offer something to that area and that's how it's going to work you've got this underlying echelon system of individuals then <laughs> above them you have the actual structure itself and the genius Loki <laughs> and this is all based off of conscious spirits <laughs> and these conscious spirits are the ones when you go in there and you're doing like an EVP session and you're like hey these are the guys that are gonna say hello hello John you know <laughs> now I don't want to drag this out too long <laughs> but something that you can do as a paranormal investigator if so let's say you go into a site you're doing your EVP session and you're trying to communicate in general with gadgets you know maybe you're busting out the ghost box and you're getting nothing something you can do as a paranormal investigator is try and figure out well you know the places that got activity what you need to do is say hey I don't like a drawing you say hey man, I'm butchering this one you say hey you know genius Loki <laughs> ask permission that intention directly speak to it and you'll say hey can I talk to these people you're not letting me talk to them genus Loki will check in the people you know the spirits will say okay we're we're friendly with that they acknowledge our our presence they acknowledge our protector they're respectful people <laughs> you can set intention just the same way and say hey we're not here to cause any negative harm we're not here to provoke you we're good people this thing is sort of going to filter all of that to these spirits if that doesn't work speak directly to it and ask it the history ask it questions <laughs> look it, it all seems a little out there but this is how you begin to break the various layers of communication down. Spirit communication is very much like it is in, in the living world and you have to find different avenues to speak to it. You can't go in there like a bull running your mouth and talking trash. It is a one-on-one -on -one conversation between the spirit world and our world it is not something that you're just gonna go in there and run your mouth about it's, it just doesn't work that way you have to break through this barrier 
you have to find some way to establish contact and doing this through a genius Loki if the building presents itself with one like that will let you know um, real quick speaking on residual speaking on residual um, potential to create a genius Loki I think in this situation when you have residual energy resi and I'll make this really quick I'll maybe make another video on it but residual energy in itself again works like a battery residual energy typically in this situation when you have a residual honey a residual hunting is based you know on tragic events um, let's see continuous flow of energy based on events so with a residual hunting there isn't so much intelligent energy involved what you have with a residual hunting and the creation of a potential genius Loki is and a put who geez what is that what you have with a residual hunting and the creation of a genius Loki is you don't this little echelon is very limited you may have some spirits that come along that are just sort of there in the energy when you come up here, we'll say this is the equation. You have maybe a f one fourth of intelligent spirit interaction, um, and then you're looking at three fourths residual. And residual energy in the situation is more of a raw energy. You know, it's a huge emotional set. It's like if you hear somebody get slapped, boom, it's like the echo of that slap. <laughs> And the way I describe it is once an event happens, boom, that's the slap. That event is always there. Let's say here, boom, you know, big house fire. Here, I'm going to put this on a different sheet. So, like, this is the thing. This is your time. This is the energy. So, boom, somebody got slapped boom house fire um you know homicide at the house let's see you know events and so what happens is each time in the grand scheme of things is an event happens and it sets the plateau sets the plateau sets the plateau so what you get is let's take this up this is your this is your capacitor this is the energy that's there now it when you get a residual occurrence it takes something to spark this energy so our line for let's say a manifestation is here the reality of the situation let's change let's change this again our line for a manifestation is here. When we get residual activity, this is our base. Let's say these are all different situations that have occurred. But the activity itself is always going to stay here where the max capacitance is. <laughs> what we need for a manifestation is something in the energetic department to cause a bump. We need bumps. This could just be, these bumps could just simply be released over time. So here we're looking for a manifestation. Boom, we get a bump. Right there, we got a manifestation. Another one occurs. Boom, a bump. Another one occurs. Boom, a bump. Up here is where you capture stuff. <laughs> you know, it's a... Let's just say a shadow. I don't think shadows are applicable here. Or you hear noise. <laughs> or you see, or you hear something move. <laughs> These are all results of piled up residual energy. Okay?
got a little bit off. I'll explain that in another video. But what we want to see is the formation of a genius Loki from residual energy. <laughs> and like I said here, you know, down here um, is your intelligent spirits. All of this is your residual raw energy. What happens here is, like I was telling you before, you know, it's sort of a raw energy with the intelligent spirits, they sort of combine in the one. And what happens is the residual energy takes on intelligence and the consciousness and it eventually it sort of reflects the inhabitants. Here, the residual genius Loki that could form would be more of a raw, natural, elemental genius Loki. And what you're going to get there is the same process. You know, it's still going to be a building. It's still going to have protection. But the energy itself inside the building, I sort of messed that up. The energy itself inside the building is basically going to run wild. You know, all of this energy is here is going to attract other things. The genius Loki itself in this situation <laughs> might be that same kind of wild mentality. It won't be, it won't have like such a set of directives and protections like the intelligent conscious genius Loki form from intelligent spirit inter interaction. But this one may find itself in some kind of intelligence and it may be conscious, but it's going to be consciousness based on elemental raw energy. And from the research I've done so far, these kind of residually fed genius Loki will create things. You're going to get like shadows. You'll get just creature manifestations. You know, your, your audio won't sound intelligent. Your EVPs won't sound intelligent. But inside of that, you're going to get, you know, intelligent EVP interaction that's in context with your question. Um, the energy that these things are feeding off of and providing the genus Loki, you know, they're going to be a little bit different. The energy is just going to feel, you know, the energy wave for an intelligent genus Loki is probably going to be like this. You know, same with the spirits, you know, they'll probably be like this. <laughs> when you deal with this residual raw genius Loki, you know, it's going to be everywhere. <laughs> and there's going to be multiple ones. But underneath, you know, the building, the building has a spirit here. This bit of information here, it's going to be hard to get through. But here you're going to have this one big dominant spirit, which is going to be a manifestation, a representation of the spirit of the, all the spirits there. But underneath, you're going to have a lot of different energies. You're not going to just have spirit, human spirit interaction. You'll have elementals. You may have malevolent energies. You may have like shadow figures, uh, all kinds of things. Now, that's not to say that this won't occur. That same thing won't occur up here. But at the same time, it's going to be, the line's going to be, be pretty, pretty flat you know, peaks here and there 
for those kinds of negative things to show up. But when you go into one of these places and you do have this big intelligent energy, this big intelligent protective energy, it's going to be a lot different. You know, that house with that raw genius Loki, it's going to have shadow figures. It might have that. It might have elementals. It might have portals. It'll have people in there too. It's sort of like a curse. That's what it is. But over here, you might have one or two of those things. But you'll have these people protected. This thing won't have as much energy, you know, as they would over here. Because this is a wild energy, depending on how you're dealing with it. Anyway, this was just 100% just off the cusp. Um, I couldn't sleep, so I'll figure why not. Let's do this. Uh, if you made it this far, please remember, subscribe plus like. <laughs> um, since I'm getting the swing of all of this, I'll probably make some more. Thanks. If you'd like to know more about Epoch Paranormal, you can find me on Twitter at Joseph Sturgill 7 or on Facebook at Epoch Paranormal. And most importantly, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Epoch Paranormal, for more videos of the paranormal, EVP, and parapsychology. Thank you.